Hi, my name is Amanda. I'm a student pharmacist here at the University of Minnesota, and I'm here today to talk to you about um, your insulin injections. Um, so first of all, you should have with you your, um, a vial insulin uh, syringe needle and also a sharps container to put down the syringes after use, okay? Um, so first of all, I want to make sure that you wash your hands um, and then um, you want to take your insulin vial. It may appear kind of cloudy, so what you're going to do is you're going to take it and you're going to roll it with your, um, with, with, between your hands. So this will remove any of that cloudy coloring um, and you do not want to shake it because this can cause clumps. Um, then you're going to make sure to um, take an alcohol swab and swab the vial. And then with a separate swab, you're going to also swab the area of application that you're going to be injecting yourself with. So then you're going to uncap your syringe, which may be a 30, 50, or 100 unit uh, syringe. All is dependent upon how much you're going to be injecting yourself with. For example, if you have a 32 um, uh, units that you have to inject yourself, then you'll use a 50 unit syringe. Okay, so to get back on the point, uh, you want to uncap the syringe. You're going to pull the plunger down. Um, it just like say, for example, you want 30 units. Um, you're going to be putting down 30 units of air. Okay, so then you're going to insert this syringe into the vial, and then you're once the air has been inserted, you're going to put it upside down and pull down to the amount that you want. So you're put, pulling it down to 30, where the plunger will be at the very top. Um, so and you want to make sure and look to, for any air bubbles. If you have any air bubbles, you want to put the um, insulin back in and pull it back down. Otherwise, you can also tap on the syringe needle to make sure to remove any air bubbles. If you do have air bubbles, this will interfere with the dose that you're actually receiving, so it's very important to remove them. Um, then you're going to be taking your syringe needle and you're going to be injecting it into your abdomen. Now, um, like I said, your abdomen should have been wiped with that area to make sure that you're not injecting any bacteria because we harbor bacteria on our skin. Um, it's a good idea to squeeze the, the fat because this is a subcutaneous injection, which is an injection inside the fat. Um, and it's a good idea to ro rotate locations. For example, going into a circle um, as you inject. Um, so one day do one location, another day do a location close by as well. Um, they should each be separated um, by two finger, finger marks. Um, you also want to make sure that there's two uh, finger away from the belly button each time you do it, okay? Um, now by rotating, you're actually preserving the tissue integrity, which would be very important. Um, but when you do inject, make sure that you're holding it into your abdomen for about five seconds after injecting. And then you want to inject it at a 90 degree angle. Okay, well I hope this helps. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.